Why did you leave the restaurant like that? Surprised you noticed. You're so busy talking to your new friend, Alex. She found an auto part we were looking for. She was excited. She didn't know it was our anniversary. Sure, she didn't. I'm sure it wasn't important enough for you to mention. <laughs> for your information, I didn't tell anybody it was our anniversary, regardless of race, creed, or sexual orientation. So you're an equal opportunity idiot. <laughs> Well, that's a great way to celebrate her anniversary. Call me an idiot. You earned it. You could have told her that it was your anniversary, that you were with your wife, and you could call her back tomorrow. That's exactly what I did say, right? If you bolted out of the restaurant. You should have seen yourself talking to her. You were drooling like a schoolboy. She got me a flow master at half price. Excuse me. While you were spending every waking moment with this woman, I went to 12 different antique stores trying to find a watch to honor the memory of your father. And you didn't look at me once like that tonight. Thanks a lot, Tim. Happy anniversary. Mom wasn't happy that you did this to her car. Well, actually, it's our car. But Mom drives it. Yeah, but I paid for it and I restored it, so... So it's really yours? Well, technically, yeah. Is that right? Oh! 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 So technically, this is your car. Oh, technically, I got a mild concussion. <laughs> Mark, I need to talk to your father for a while, so long. Um... Okay, but leave this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey, I think you misheard that. Maybe I did. I thought that I just heard my husband say that this is his car because he paid for it. Well, I know him. I don't think he would have said that. <laughs> I know him better than you do, and I think he did. Look. I think of it as mine not because I paid for it, but because I maintain it. Well, I maintain the house, so I guess that would make it mine. Well, it can't be yours. You didn't pay for it. Uh. <laughs> so technically, the house is yours because you paid for it? Technically. <laughs> but I don't charge any rent. <laughs> years when you said that everything was ours. What you really meant was everything was yours, yours, yours. Jill has nothing. You have my heart, honey. In your very angry hand. Come on, come on, Jill. Don't get all whipped up about this. You know, Tim, I have always thought of this house as our home. It is our home. No, it's not. It's Tim's house. This is Tim's table. No, this is Tim's Jill. couch. All Jill. that stuff over there Jill. is Tim's. Jill. Oh, here's something of mine. These coasters are mine. Well, actually, didn't Aunt Helen send them to both of us for our wedding? Well, here's your half. Good thing she didn't send us bowling balls. You are such a hypocrite. Me? Yes. I'm not the one sneaking around opening my own checking account. Since when is it sneaking around for me to go out in broad daylight and open an account with my money? My money, my money. Yes, my and money. I need it because without it, all I've got are three kids and a couple of coasters. You act like it's my fault to make all the money and pay for everything around here. Well, why don't you just take everything around here? Why don't you take my checking account, too? Why do I want that? There's no money in it. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. First, you give me a hard time because I get a little teeny scratch on the door. Then you let somebody drop a building on it? Not only do you not tell me about any of this, but you tell other people that it was my fault? It could have been your fault. What? Maybe that scratch weakened the entire structure of this car. That is such a crock. Look, look, this could have happened to anybody. Yeah, anybody who parked under a crane and what kind of a crane operator drops a three-ton beam anyway? You know, we should just sue that jerk for all he's worth. Oh, we don't want to do that. Why not? You married him. Oh, no. You did this? You mean we got to pay for this? I'm sure we got some beam droppage thing in our insurance. Tim, 
Why couldn't you just leave my car alone? Why do you have to obsess about a stupid little scratch? This is just a car. It's a hunk of metal used to, to haul kids to soccer practice. This is not a hunk of metal. <laughs> This used to be a classic. It looks like a giant hot dog bun. You let it go already? Nobody is gonna ship you off to Pakistan, except maybe me. All I know is every pin you knocked down killed another one of my dreams. You are being ridiculous, but it's not gonna hold this against you. Didn't you notice after the fifth frame, the man hardly said a word? So he was a little quiet. No, a quiet bud is a mad bud. And a mad bud is a bad bud. <laughs> the mood he was in it was impossible for me to talk about my plans for Benford. You actually think that I jeopardized your entire future by bowling well? If the rented shoe fits. Uh. If I'd known you'd act like this, I wouldn't have let you come. Let me come? You begged me to come. Because I thought you were going to be helpful. Oh. You are absolutely unbelievable. First, you make me miss my lecture. Then you tell me what I can or can't say to Bud. I'm not allowed to eat. And then I have to throw the best game of my life. I just wanted you to be more flexible. Flexible? <laughs> Whatever direction you pointed me in, I was expected to perform. I was like your little Binford wind-up wife. <laughs> Binford doesn't make a wind-up wife. Well, I've been your little wind-up husband whenever you wanted me to. Went to the professor's house for dinner, remember that? Yeah, and you complained the whole night. I did whatever you wanted me to do. I only asked you to pass the onion dip. Well, you got it, didn't you? <laughs> you say that you need me by your side, and then you don't even treat me like a person. You acted like I was just one of your appendages. Well, forgive me for thinking my career is important. Apparently, that's all you think is important. Oh, that's not true. Where you hit me with a bowling ball, I find quite important, too. Well, that's okay, because I think it's going to have plenty of time to heal. Two hours unbelievable. Set the time. Hello? Me. Hey, Jill. What are you doing sitting here in the... Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, looks like you planned something special. Yeah. You can put together a little dinner for... Uh -huh. <clears throat> hey, where are the kids? Your mother came and picked them up. No kids. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, so we could have a nice romantic evening alone together, just me and that chicken on your plate. So you must have had to carry the conversation. <laughs> I just want to know what happened to 15 minutes, set the timer. I mean, I'm really sorry, but the guys and I got in some real serious discussions about, um, relationship things, you know. Men, women stuff, sharing feelings, pretty heavy stuff. I spent two days planning this evening. Do you have any idea how long it's been since we had a quiet, romantic evening together? I was on the phone, why don't you say, come home? I wanted to surprise you. Well, I'm surprised. <laughs> Come on, Jill, lighten up. I didn't understand what you meant on the phone. Well, what did you think I meant when I said all that stuff about how I was looking forward to seeing you and, um, I'll be waiting? Oh, like you said it like that, I'll be waiting. Well, I wanted to be more subtle. What did you want me to say? The kids are gone, I'm home alone, come and take me, big daddy. Well, that I understand. <laughs> Good night. Come on, Jill. I don't go out with these guys every night. What's making you so angry? I am angry because you said you were going to be home in 15 minutes, and then you weren't. Because I'm flirting with you like crazy on the phone. You didn't even notice. And most of all, because I went to all this trouble for nothing. I spent the whole evening by myself, and now you're stuck with a plate of cold food. Oh, don't worry about me. I ate at the bar. 